In this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of proof by deduction, which is one of the many proofs we have in mathematics, but proof by deduction is in both the analysis and approaches SL and HL course. Okay, so what is a mathematical proof? A proof is just a series of logical steps that show that one side of a mathematical statement is equal to, or as we can see in this ex second example, equivalent to the right-hand side. Now, if it was equal to here, we might just see numbers where this left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. But if we have variables here, we may see the, uh, the identity symbol, which would say the left-hand side is equivalent to the right-hand side. But that's the goal here. For these basic uh, proof by deduction questions, the goal of an algebraic proof like we have here uh, is to transform one side of the mathematical statement until it looks exactly like the other side. That's the goal. Okay, so I'll take you through the three examples, and then hopefully we can get the idea of how to solve these types of questions. So for this first one, we want to show or prove that 1 over 4 plus 1 over 12 uh, is equal to 1 over 3. Okay, this is a pretty basic one here. What we can do is tackle the left-hand side, and we want to try and transform this left-hand side just by using basic algebra to be equal to the right-hand side. Well, 1 over 4 we know is the same as 3 over 12 if we multiply top and bottom by 3. And that's what we have right here. So 3 over 12 plus 1 over 12 is our left-hand side. Now 3 over 12 plus 1 over 12, we have a common denominator here of 12. So we can just add our numerators, which is 4 over 12. Now 4 over 12, we know we can simplify that to be 1 over 3. And 1 over 3 is now our left-hand side, which was our right-hand side. So we have showed uh, that this left-hand side equals the right-hand side. And once you get to this step here in your proof, what you can do, you have two options. You can say, well, the left-hand side is equivalent to the right-hand side. Or alternatively, you can put this, this statement here, QED. You can put it right here. And QED, uh, it's a Latin phrase, and it means, well, which... Uh, what was to be demonstrated or what was to be shown. We have shown uh, that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. Okay, so once we've transformed one side to equal the other side, and, and in this question here, we've transformed the left-hand side to equal the right-hand side, but you can choose uh, if this maybe this equation was flipped and the one-third was on the left-hand side and these two terms were on the right-hand side, you can transform the right-hand side to be equal to the left-hand side. So either or is fine but we can't move things across the equal sign in these types of questions. That's a rule that we can't, bre can't break. Okay, so that's the first one done. Now the second one is quite similar. What we have here is we want to show that one over n plus one plus one over n squared plus n is equivalent, this is our identity symbol, uh, to one over n. Okay, so let's look at the left-hand side here because this is what we need to transform to equal the right-hand side. We can multiply top and bottom by this fraction here by n, and we will get n over n times n plus 1. And then we are adding, and on, this, on the denominator of the second fraction, I've factored out the n to be n out the front of n plus 1, such that we have a common denominator here. Therefore, we now have n plus 1 over n times n plus 1. The n plus 1s can cancel out and we will simply be left with 1 over n, which was the right-hand side. So as, as we said earlier, we can either put left-hand side is equivalent to the right-hand side as our concluding statement, or you can put QED. Okay, the last one's a bit of an extension on uh, from the basic proof by deduction questions. Bit of a worded question here, so let's go through uh, the question. It says, to prove that the sum of the squares of any two consecutive odd integers is even. Okay, so let's firstly try and define some things here. Well, two consecutive odd integers, that can just be 2n minus 1 and 2n plus 1. Because let's just say n is some is any number. If we say, well, 2n is just 2 times that number, we know that 2 times any number is an even number. If I multiply anything by 2, I get to an even number. And then if I subtract 1, I get to an odd number. And then if alternatively I added one, that would be the next odd number. So 2n minus 1 and 2n plus 1, I have defined as my two consecutive odd integers. And then if I want to prove that the sum of, the, of these two numbers 
the squares of these two numbers uh, is even, well, I can start with this right here. I can then try and prove that this is even by expanding our brackets and, and squaring both of these terms. So this will be 4n minus, uh, 4n squared minus 4n plus 1. If we just expand this bracket, plus, and then we have 4n squared plus 4n plus 1. And then what we can do is collect our like terms. This will become 8n squared. The negative 4n will cancel out with a positive 4n, and we just have plus 2. And then what we can do here is recognize that 2 is common. So if I factorize out the 2, I will have, I will have 2 out the front of 4n squared plus 1. Now this here, I've simplified all the way down to this here. This here is currently the sum of the squares of two consecutive odd integers. And we want to prove that this is even. And what we can say is, well, because we have two times this, well, clearly this here is divisible by two. Clearly this is even because we have two times something. If we give any number for n, well, if we substitute it in here and then times it by two, this, this result, this resultant will clearly be an even number because of this two. So that's the uh, that's the most challenging step in the, in the question like this. We need to recognize that this here is divisible by two. So therefore we can say the sum of the squares of any two consecutive odd integers is therefore even because it's divisible by two. Okay, so here are three examples. Uh, I, I highly recommend you maybe go to your textbook and, and, and try and find a few more. But the goal of our, deduct, our proof by deduction questions uh, is to uh, find uh, the left-hand side and try and use some algebra, or it might be the right-hand side, but the goal is to make them equal to each other uh, just by following the steps and then put a nice conclusion at the end. Okay, so good luck.